When did we first understand what directs the shape of our nose, foot size, personality, and chance of surviving in a tough world? There's an interesting history about how we learned that our ancestral genes and environment are responsible. Hippocrates and Aristotle stated that heredity material gathers from throughout parents' bodies and mixes during the sexual act. About the same time, ancient scholars from India added two more factors of heredity. They added the soul, which enters the baby from some undefined place at some undefined time, and the diet of the mother. In the mid-1700s, Carl Linnaeus, a brilliant Swedish botanist physician, believed that both shared parental fluids and environmental factors influenced inheritance. Late in the 1700s, Jean-Baptiste Lamarck proposed that animals can acquire characteristics influenced by their environment and pass that on directly. His famous example was the long neck of the giraffe that he thought resulted from parents stretching to reach leaves. He thought this characteristic was then directly passed on to offspring. In the mid-1800s, Genetic understanding was greatly advanced by friar Gregor Mendel, who worked mostly on pea plants. His influence is still taught in biology classes. And about the same time, English naturalist Charles Darwin put together observations of animals and plants from a five-year around-the-world sailing expedition on the HMS Beagle. His revolutionary and famous work came out in 1859 entitled on the origin of species. Darwin defined evolution as the result of natural selection, acting on random mutations. Put it another way, each species improves only through the survival of the fittest of each subsequent offspring. For example, the weakest wolf pups of the litter don't make it, but the strongest are best able to reproduce with a mate and have offspring, thus passing on the advantage through selection. Darwin's natural selection theory clearly dismissed Lamarck's giraffe environmental example. Scientists felt that with Darwin, they finally had the answer to the puzzle. But controversy followed Darwin like a pack of wild dogs. Darwin was opposed by many religious leaders since God seemed removed from that process. Darwin, a very religious man, believed the hand of God worked through natural selection, which some might define as Darwin's theory of intelligent design. That did not and still doesn't satisfy certain believers, but that's a discussion for another time. Most recently, we've discovered that environmental factors like starvation, smoking, or stress can activate or suppress genetic codes, and those changes can be passed on, reviving Lamarck's ideas of environmental influence. I don't have to stick my neck out too far to say that there is great cause for excitement in the emerging field of genetics and epigenetics.